Show and I want to go over there. Uh, Mr. Willie Fair and uh, Shirley Fair. Wow, 50 years. How did that happen? 50 years. That's a long time. That's a long time. How did, how did that happen? She's scared of balloons. Now that that's a good thing. Just balloon come. Wow. That pop when it pops. Yeah. And you know something? Your son will not shut up back there. He won't. He All right, we back because we had his son. He's a DJ with the big mouth. But uh, uh, Willie was working in the shipyard for years, and you was the wife. And you took care of her. Girlfriend. So is that make that do that make that work? Yes. That yes. works. Yes, yes. You learn to submit right yourself right to each other as God has ordered us to submit to each other and this made it work. Wow. You didn't just get fifty years just haphazard. It was honored by God and we stayed together through a lot of struggles, a lot of ups and downs, and we stayed together, never been apart. Never been apart. Never. Yeah, dog. Wow. Now that's what I'm talking about. I wanna, I wanna wish you all a, a happy 50th birthday. Uh, I bought him a fishing pole, and uh, I bought her. Yeah, he got a fishing pole, so he can go out there and fish a little bit. <laughs> and uh, I got her a crystal little bunny. And that'll that'll be with you forever. Yes, it uh, is. I love you all like sisters and brothers. Love you and too. and you told me you left it in my mailbox, and I was going. I ain't been to bed. I got off at six. I had to come film you all. Yes. Yeah. It wouldn't have been the same without you. What would you tell a couple that's young and just got married? What would you? What advice would you give to them? Leave that crazy monkey. Oh, baby. What would you do to him? Oh, you can't. <laughs> I, I just tell them to hang in there. Mm -hmm. Whatever you accumulate together, and, and, and be as one. Be as one. This ain't that ain't her car, my car, my house. Okay. Fifty fifty. That's right. Sometimes it's seventy thirty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. That's all right. All right. That's gonna conclude our. Uh, interview and we gonna let them get back to part I'm cutting these hot lights out I love both of you all God bless you Jazz Red Talk Show and this is a, a house that is a project okay say you get this house and all the installation is down you see that do you say okay it is it's lighter here so you'll be able to see it ladies and gentlemen but uh this is this home is gonna we're gonna do before and then we'll do after we just showing the inside you see the installation down look that look like my back sunroom when I had to get it fixed but I'm telling you you can take a house and you can fix it up even your house you can fix it up you get a house and you fix it up a lot of people are buying investment properties now uh, this is a, a it's a buddy of mine house, and we're not saying where it's at, but we're it's finna get fixed up. You're not going to know it. This is a, a room I wanted to show you because we got light. I'm going to show you another one. And it's not going to look like this when these contractors get through. There's a red. Peace out. All right, this is a little small room here, and you're not going to know this house. You're not going to know it when we finish. We're showing you the before, and we're saying... Across the screen, running before pictures. This is a room. Wow. Boy, this is like an attic. And this attic got one, two, three, four, probably four rooms in it. Wow, I see the potential. This is all upstairs. We're going to go down. There's more rooms than this. But this is going to be fixed up. And this is your inspiration to buy something and have it fixed up. Because they had to do my sheetrock. My stuff was hanging down. 
in my sunroom. room. They had to do my sheetrock. And after I got the roof fixed, we did the sheetrock. Proper procedure. Your roof got to not leak before you do all this stuff. You know that. All right. Just a bit of sunlight here. All this will be redid. Are oh, we going to do hardwood flows or tile? Have you decided yet? Uh, hardwood. Hardwood. It's going to be hardwood flow. Uh, and you're not going to know this house when we come back. Peace out. All right. This is uh, the kitchen. This is the kitchen area. And there are no lights on. So this is a project that is going to be done. And it's going to be an inspiration. It's going to be an inspiration. A lot of people are, are buying investment homes. But uh, we're going to see how this one's going to turn out. We're going to see how this one's going to turn out. Wow. Never know where my show going. Wow. Jazz Red Talk Show. And, and this was the family that lived in here. And uh, my buddy is was a little girl. We're going to go in this corner because they barely got her in that corner holding her mouth. And she still holds her mouth like that. But uh, she inherited this house. And uh, she wanted to show it as an inspiration. So she's going to talk to you and tell you a little bit about the history of this house. Wow. Jazz Red Talk Show. We usually, this is the history lady here that got uh, got some books published. Tell them the name of your book. Okay, I'm the author of uh, Avenue, the Davis Avenue Story, uh, In Memory of You, An Educational Legacy, um, number three, uh, Who Silenced Booker T. Washington, and I assisted my husband with the, um, the history of Central High School. With a DVD in the back, and they see it. Yes, with a DVD, and I want them to know that the Avenue book is now being put on um, cassette tapes. Oh, right. Not tapes, but what, DVDs? The, uh, CDs. Yes, yeah, CDs. CDs. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, one other book you did. See, you can do so many books, you forget what you did. In Memory of You. Oh, yeah, uh, In Memory of You, An Educational Legacy, which highlights school namesakes. You got one more you done did. Church. Oh, the church book. Yes. <laughs> the history of the black churches is called uh, Treasured Memories, the beginning of an era to show how the you know historic black churches started in Mobile, Alabama. All you church folks need that book. You need to know the history. Mm -hmm. She got some pastors pictures in there, probably some kin to you. You need to call Paulette Harden. Her phone number is running across that screen. So that's enough about the books. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're, we are always doing something. So this is what she wanted to do. Paulette bought a commercial for me. Thank you, Paulette, for buying a commercial. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's going to tell you about this house. What are you doing with this house here? What's going on? Okay, I was informed that um, I inherited uh, this home. And uh, my, my cousin uh, recently died. And this the home of my, my grandparents. My grandfather built this home from the ground up in 1950. And he was the, uh, the grandson of a, um, of a slave. Wow. Yes. So, and he was a builder. And there was a poem I had to learn in 1969 called Builders Are Wreckers. And are we builders or wreckers? Okay. I had to make a choice whether to demolish this home or to build it. And it takes more brain to rebuild a home than it is to wreck a home. It, it does. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I want to show some inspiration on what you can do to take. We tried to sell this home, but nobody wanted it. So I call it the house nobody wanted. Okay. But when we finish it, I think everybody's going to want it. Yeah, they're going to want it then. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, you had told me that uh, some family members, mm -hmm. you'll have, they'll have somewhere to go. And you get just, yeah. it's going to be like a family home. It is a yeah, family yeah, it's home. It's a family home. It's, it, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name this home Legacy. Okay. Because, you know, like my grandparents was here. Um, my father grew up here. My cousins. And uh, although we live down Dolphin Island Parkway, that, that portrait that you showed, that's a, uh, it was taken in 1962 and my brother, I think we were visiting here, uh, maybe it was around Thanksgiving mm -hmm. of 1962. And, and we, uh, my grandfather put that family portrait and he gave me that family portrait uh, maybe, maybe 20 years ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Who'd have thought that you was a little girl? You ever was up in that attic when you was a little girl? Well, my father showed us that attic, okay. but we didn't go up there. We wow. just we just looked up the stairs, but we never did go up there. Okay. But and 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 I think that attic is a great place if you have teenagers. Yeah. Where they want to. You know, do that. It's called man cave. You yeah. know, men like they man cave, they mm -hmm. private space. It is. So it, it's, but but I'm gonna call it a special place, and I'm gonna put toys up there, and uh, educational material for children. So that's gonna be a you know children's like bedroom. They would love that. It's oh. like a mm -hmm. big playhouse up there. It is. It just made me want to crawl through them doors and go all through all the rooms. It is so nice. It'll be like a little playhouse. Yes, my grandfather uh, that at, that attic was built the wood is from an old barn years wow. ago and he and he had a, enough uh, lumber left over and mm -hmm. he built a duplex on this property uh, but it was torn down yeah, yeah. but my grandfather worked at the shipyard did he really yes. what did he do i'm not sure what he did okay but i just know that he you know worked at the shipyard and he was very thrifty with his money no oh, more. Me and him could have went hand in hand going yeah, to the yard very, sales and stuff. <laughs> yes, and they were uh, they were mobilians. Wow. And his father was uh, the pa one of not the pastor, but one of the deacons at Friendship Baptist Church in Crichton. Wow. So shout out to Friendship Baptist Church in Crichton. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. They mm -hmm. they would need to see this once you finish it. Yeah. Wow. It, so it the contractors a, and everybody. Yeah, is, I was trying to debate and I prayed about it. Should uh, should I get a bulldozer and just yeah. wipe it away? And then I thought I would have to keep the grass cut for the rest of my life. Yeah. And then I thought there are so many people that need a home mm -hmm. that I said, well, you know, just, just repair it. You know, so I did find a, a, a very good uh, contractor okay. uh, who said, no, this is a this house was built on a good foundation. Wow. So therefore, he said it was worth, and, it, and he wanted to take on the challenge to getting it done, so yeah. he's, they're working on it. And you had everybody to come out, termite people, yeah, yeah. electricians, mm -hmm. built in the 50s, and it's still standing. Yes. And it's strong, all, all the old wood. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of old wonders. You see these wonders here? They're, they're old wonders. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah we got, they're going to repair all this stuff, remove the damaged wood, and uh, we're going to bring this house up to a modern day standard, you know, trying to salvage as much of what my grandfather put in, yeah. and we're going to, you know, kind of salvage Okay, it. it had been raining, so that held up a lot. But, yeah, it, it held up But we lot. needed, I needed to get some footage where you'll see it after it's done. Mm -hmm. uh, my viewers see it now, so then they'll see it after it's done. Right. So, wow. Yeah, but, but now we're going to, you know, keep it up and... You know, like I said, so many people need a place to live. It is. Yeah, and like I said, it's easier to tear it down than to build it up. So what we're going to do, just like you, you're a builder. You yeah. know, you build the community, but, you know, bringing things in the community. So I want to do my share of building something with history. Wow. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the next time you all see the house, it'll be finished, and it will be a shocker. Mm -hmm. It'll be a shocker. Uh, give them your phone number in case they want to get one of those five books that you have published. Okay. Uh, my number is area code 251-377-5040. Now, I'm going to throw something up at you. I ain't letting you leave till you give me some history on Davis Avenue. Throw me up oh, some. Okay. Okay. What about the big house? Okay, that house on Davis Avenue at Hickory, well, it's called Martin Luther King at Hickory Street, that was the home of Dave Patton. Uh, many people feel that Dave Patton, the street Davis Avenue was named after Dave Patton, when actually Dave Patton was a building contractor. Mm -hmm. Dave Patton could have yes. rebuilt this house. Yeah. That, that's what he did for a you know, living, a building contractor. He had a lot of mules and boxes and all this type of Name stuff. Name one thing he built. He, he built the foundation for the Sanger Theater. Wow. And Lions Park. Lions Park, all right. Yeah, Murphy High School. What? Yes. Wow. Yeah, so Dave Patton had a gold, he, he had a gold tooth in his mouth. Right, and, uh, but he had a lot of men working under him. Wow. Yeah, so, but I want them to know that Davis Avenue was not named for Dave Patton. It was named for Jefferson Davis, president of the Confederacy. Wow. And we proud to say we were staying on David Avenue. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you just got a little trip back in history, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. and you're going to see an inspiration with this house. 
this uh, 4th of July morning, and they're out here cutting. I don't yeah. brought my weed. A lot of people, they don't use to see me like this, but, you know, I don't, you know, I don't, I, I tie my hair up because we got to cut the grass. You got to keep the grass cut. got to keep the property up. Yeah, that's, that's one thing. You got to mm -hmm. keep the value of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Come by my house when you get through. Jazz Red, we love you. <laughs> Peace. Jazz Red Talk Show. It's 4th of July morning, and I wanted to show... This brother here is a young brother, but he is, this how you do some wood when you want some real bobby. And he even offered, he said, you want some? I, man, I ain't getting on no grill. I'm out here trying to film. I got off at 6 this morning. I'm out here trying to film. And uh, I wanted to show, this is how you get your wood for your barbecue to get that real smoke flavor. This is what you do. And, and he's cutting off all this bark around the side. All that bark. You see that? Now y'all, y'all brothers learning something. I know a lot of y'all do this maybe, and some of y'all brothers go bad. I see y'all there, low, but this is how you do it. You shave it around the side, and then when we come back, we're gonna show you what else. All right, we don't want you to try this at home if you're not a professional. All right, <laughs> you gotta be professional, not Jason, but you're gonna be professional. Wow, this is how you cut. Look at that. Look at that. You split, look at that, you split that up, you split it up, wow, you split it. This is making your barbecue wood. I wanted you all to see this, because I didn't know a lot of young men even know nothing about this. He got the tree stump, he got the tree stump and everything. Man, I hate to make him man. He right around here where the hatchet at, boy. Woo, have mercy, Jesus, I hate to make him mad, Lord. Wow. This is an inspiration to show you that you men can chop your own wood. You don't have to spend money to buy wood. You're going to get great smoke flavor. Jazz Red, we love you. I might have to come back and get a reel. How much one reel? Jazz Red. <laughs> Jazz Red. Now, this is my first time doing it. <laughs> she gonna try. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. All right. Okay. okay. So people know we just write history, but I can do other things. Okay. All, All right. right. Here I go. Gotta straddle myself. Oh, okay. She did it. Wow. Give me that hatchet. All right, Jazz Red finna try this bad boy here. Uh, I'm gonna try it anyway. <laughs> That's a wrap. I can't do it. <laughs> Ken, you gonna try? We ain't finna sit here and let her play with it. Jazz Red, we talking about Jazz Red Talk Show. We here with some brothers in Pritchard, and they throwing some firecracker. Wait a minute, was that a firecracker? Oh, oh, it's something else. Look at him. He he, he, he said he missed it. He was stepping down. This is blackjack. Oh, oh, it's a blackjack. Okay, that's blackjack. There you go again. Jazz can't follow them things up in the air. That's that wheel whoops. Wow, wow. That's the one that came when when he was Shiva came. Oh. Whatever he say, Jazz Red, uh, we gonna get, uh, get a lady get out here to tell y'all happy Fourth of July. Jazz, Jazz Red hey. Talk Show. What you say, oh, sis? Hey, Jazz Red Show. So happy Fourth of July, clean from Pritchard, Alabama. Stop the violence. Love everybody. God bless you. Jazz Red Talk Show, and we're here with important dignitary. What's your name, Jamar? Jamar. <laughs> All right, I said, what's your name, Jamal? Y'all know Jazz is crazy, and tired. All right, uh, it's after the fourth. Uh, give them the name of your business. We're at E&J Auto Repair. We're at 2251 Costa Ritas. E&J Auto Repair, paint and body. We do mechanic work, paint and body work also. Speak up a little bit. I hope everybody had a good fourth. Uh, hope didn't nobody get hurt. Uh, continue to check your antifreeze, your Freon. Uh, your tire pressure, make sure your battery is okay, uh, especially due to this summer heat, you know, I, mean, I know vacationers, uh, you're in and out of town, so make sure you come by and see us. Give them the phone number. 251-479-1317. Y'all come out and see Jamal, E&J Auto, Jazz Red, we love you. I'm putting you on something now, they're good people. Peace out. How long you been in bed? 50 years. 50 years. Wow. Jazz Red, we love you. Peace out. Jazz Red Talk Show, and uh, 
I've got a young lady here. I we've been trying to set it up to put her on for a while, but I, and 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 she's into domestic violence, and she's gonna tell you why. But I I wanted to have her on because I said I'm not gonna film right now about domestic violence. I'll do it next week, and every week somebody getting killed, some lady getting killed. So I I got to come on with it. You know, she's been on before, but for my new people that hadn't seen her, and for the new updates on a lot of stuff. Um, we're gonna interview her now. Her daughter was uh was killed through domestic violence. Yes. So, uh, what's your name, sis? Devonna Tinsley. I want you to speak up to Tinsley. I know it's a hurting right. thing. I'm trying to get a little close yes. to you, but I'm yes. gonna want you to speak up where they can hear you. Um, lately, okay, your daughter. What's your daughter's name? Satori Richardson. Okay, she was killed in domestic violence. Yes. Now, look like every week. Everybody. You going back through this, you know, and, and you be on Facebook saying, wow, yes. somebody hurt, somebody got killed or got shot. And, and it's happening all over oh, the, Lord. everywhere, mm. everywhere, all out of town. Oh, yes, Lord. Men killing women. I, I don't understand what's going on. I, I don't understand what's going on. Oh. But uh, we're going to ask you uh to explain some stuff now, your daughter was killed in domestic violence. What year was it? Tell them about it. It was July the 4th, 2014. As a matter of fact, yesterday it marked the third year of her, you know, the anniversary of her death. But she was killed on, on 4th of July? 4th of July. Wow. 4th of July. It'll wow. never be the same. 4th of July. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, what happened that day? Well, um, uh, According to the courts and um, the records, approximately around 3.30, I would say, within 3.30, uh, that's when it occurred. Okay. Yeah, her boyfriend began to uh, attack her viciously, brutally, and he stabbed her over 30 times. He strangled her. He also put her in the bathtub. And he set the house on fire. And he did all this in front of her four-year-old daughter. Yes, ma'am. My daughter was begging for her life. Yes, she fought for her life. Yes, ma'am. Wait a minute. How many times she was stabbed? I want to say the, 32 or 34. Wow. But, that many times? Yes, ma'am. I mean, one time is enough, but 30-something. That's a crime of passion. Wow. That's a crime of passion when you, you do it that many times. Over 30 times, yes. Wow. When you got the word. My God. Who called you? My father. He called my husband's phone, and he began to tell my husband, you know, what happened. And so my husband, I knew it was serious. First of all, it was like 4, I guess we got that phone call by 4.30 in the morning. So I knew it was something then. And then when my husband was talking, he was like, no, what? And so I knew then it was serious. So I said, what happened? What happened? He said, I can't tell you right now. I can't tell you right now. And I was like, please tell me. Please tell me. But he did not want to tell me. And then instantly he told me after I began to just, you know, just want to know. He was like, um, they say Tori was killed and, um, you know, by her boyfriend. And he set the house on fire. And it's like instantly, um, woman of God, I went into complete shock. And when I say shock, it's like a numbness came up, numbness came over my body. And I was like, I mean, I just was in totally disbelief. I was in total disbelief because they appeared to have a perfect relationship. I'm just being honest. Okay. I had no clue that he was abusing her. You know, I had heard of stories. You know, one time her car was burned uh, beyond recognition. Uh, the only thing was visible was her license plate, the license plate. Whoa. And I was told that, you know, he did it, but I still didn't know this. So I really didn't think it was as serious as it was. So when I got that call, not only was I shocked about her death, I was shocked about the person who they said did it. Wow. Honestly. Wow. Honestly. And I told myself these words that I would pay more attention to show no signs because like I say I was so happy for them I used to compliment him and thank him for the th nice things he done with my daughter and and her kids and I just was so happy for my daughter because she had previously 
came out of domestic violence relationship. So wow. I was glad to see her smile and yeah. happy again, you know. But lo and behold, it's as if the old, like the old folks say, from better, from bad to worse. Wow, that's the way it was. Yeah, yes. at least you didn't you didn't think that this person had that type of anger at all. Wow, it, n not visibly. I never seen it at all, at all. And they say they are. I was. I was told they dated like almost nine months. So, you know, I don't know if they dated before, but it was only like nine months that they were together. And, you know, like I said, I didn't see it. It was the biggest shot. It was the biggest shot. Oh, yeah, my God. Me. It was a real total shot. That 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 was some anger there. That some real out. anger. Man, yes. yeah. I, I, and and uh, were you... Let me ask you something. When something happened like that, do they let you look at the body or... You know what? I thank God, you know, for the Mobile Police Department. Okay. Uh, one of the detectives, they was awesome. Detective Gillespie and also, it's another guy. I'm, and I'm, please, if he's looking at this, I apologize. But I know he's a twin. I just got to throw that out there. Now, okay. But I apologize. I don't know his name. Okay. But he was the one, I guess, the lead detective. And he was so awesome. And he was, you know, he saw me out there in the parking lot, me and my family, as we gathered after the doctor informed us that she had passed. Mm -hmm. And, he, you know, he just was letting us know, you know, everything. But he told me these words. He said, I'm not going to let you all go back there. It's mm -hmm. too much. Okay. Okay. And I respect him yeah, and love right. him for that because, honestly, I don't know how, I don't know what state I would have been in after that. So I, I'm so thankful for that, you know, because... It's good when you are have a job position and you're not only just, you know, you're doing your job, but you're going above and beyond. You know, he considered, you know, me as a mother, you yeah. know what I'm saying, you as a human being. He knew he, he, he knew that we couldn't handle it. Okay. And I, pre I, I really appreciate him for that to this day. So I didn't see her after that. The only time I did see her was... When Hodges funeral home and I gotta get them, I love them dearly. They they throw out a red carpet for me and my family. I mean, the love was just above measures. And when they did, um, when they prepared her body for her burial, and I and I was pleased. I was like pleased. I I handled it. I handled it very well because through the strength of God, because I knew it was Him. And when I saw my baby, I said, "That's my baby." Okay. I said, that's my baby. Wow, they know? so hard just did a great job. I huh? mean, even my mom, after she saw the autopsy pictures and the wow. pictures, she said, hard just did a good job. Huh? Okay. And I was told that, in a way, it's uh, Jack Armstead. He was one of the lead um, morticians there. And uh, Taylor Hodge Jr., He they played a, a significant part. And they told me that. And, and Taylor Hodge Sr., he ensured me that they was going to take care of my baby. And when I tell you, they took care of my baby. She was, she looked it awesome. Wow. And so I was pleased. And, yeah, and that was the only time I saw her after she was prepared for her burial. You saw her after she was prepared. I was. And, and that, that, that was about the best thing for you. That was the only yeah. thing that I wow. could handle. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, it's, yeah, it was a vicious attack. Wow. Wow. All over her body. When you see this on the news... Or uh, somebody Facebook and call. How does it make you feel? Oh man, I go and don't let it be somebody like a connection. Like if I knew the mother of the child that was yeah. murdered, like I mean, any type of close connection, I definitely take it hard. But I take it hard. It affect me even if you know I don't know the people at all. But when I definitely know them, or uh, I say go down, I go down for like four or five days. I mean, it's like, I just feel for that mother, that child, that mm -hmm. was that motherless child wow. that was left behind, the siblings, the grandmothers, the, you know, the friends. I mean, it's just like, I just, even recently when the two young ladies that was back to back to back, yeah, I just, I just shut down my phone. I can look at Facebook. I can look at none of the comments. I can look at the news. Wow. Because it's like you say, it's like reliving it. Reactment. I mean, I going mean, back through it. Wow. Seriously, because I'm wow. like, why? And then my heart goes, I was like, God, you know, I just feel like we're not doing enough, Lord. And it's like, 
you know, give me the strength to do it more. And like this last incident, and I know the family won't mind me sharing this. The last young lady that died, um, she was a cousin of my daughter. Okay. And I was just with her uh, two days before her death. Wow. And it really, it really gave me a zeal and a fire to show up, run on and get this out because I never knew she was in a domestic violence relationship and she been walking with me for the past three years because simply because my daughter was her cousin okay. and because she was my friend Wow! so she been walking with me throughout this ordeal and now I didn't even know she was in a domestic violence relationship so is it a thing that uh, why okay come me now, Jazz Red got a big mouth. I'm a holler. I'm a tell. Yes. Uh, I used to get into it. My ex husband, we were young, and folks would call the police. I'm yes. finna bust him in the head. You know, I, I was a fighter backer, you yes. know. And, and I'm saying, what make these women wow. hide it yeah. and keep it away from their mom? I, yeah. And you, you went through it, and, and you just didn't even know, really. You know, I you didn't, didn't know. know. This second time with my daughter, relationship. I'm gonna tell you what, get on know. my nerve. They'll be on Facebook somehow. Well, they should have did this or they should have oh, did that. No. You you shut your mouth. Talk. They need to shut up talking about yes. people until you don't walk in somebody's shoes. Really walk. Then you really don't know. Yes. And you, you know, and it's bad again. Pray you don't get that wake up call. The Seriously? ones that run their mouth. We pray you don't get that wake up oh. call. But it be people that don't. Oh, they get on Facebook like they know everything. They're Doctor Ruth. They're doc. You know, yeah. they're 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 a consultant. They're a psychiatrist. Well, the mama should have did this. Mm -hmm. Shit, you don't even know, man. My I mean, you know, we can't put that on a mom. We can't put that on family because some of them don't know. They don't. And then you know something? You can get them and run them away. Yes. And sometimes them good go right on back. You know, I ain't saying that was your end, but I've talked to some girls that'll go right on back thinking they'll get better. But when I was with my husband, I didn't kind of know about that, you know, because I tried to hit him with a car. I tried to run over that sucker, man. I mean, I know, I know I, how yeah. when you're young, you feisty. Yes. You know, you're young and feisty, but you have to listen to old school. My you know, before you sit around and think about doing some stuff like that, you need to call somebody. Yeah, seriously. You need to call somebody. Come, them brother, they, uh, them guys have messed their life up. You done took a life, yes. but your life over with too. You gone, it's man. Over with. It's over with. You either gonna oh get death penalty, or you gonna go to jail. Somebody gonna beat you up because they some king. Because you know everybody some king to somebody. Yes. And it's a bad yes. thing. Uh, uh mm. what about the families? Okay, mm. you after this, then okay, you get the you. It's done. You had the funeral. Yes. Now you gotta. You gotta go to court. How long it gonna take for court? You know. Yes. You gotta go to court then. Yes. You yes. gotta go to court. Then how, it might take what? A year? Mm, three months? years what was our situation. Uh yeah, due to the seriousness of the crime. And as a matter of fact, tomorrow, July the sixth, is the sentencing day for him. And like you said, it's a no win situation. I have no no anger. Okay. Unforgiveness towards him. I can honestly say this from day one. Because like you said, I know, you know, his life is over. You know, it's like, and he's someone's child. So yes, I, he is. Yeah, and even though my child was taken, I began to instantly um, understand his mom, mm -hmm. the way she feel, mm -hmm. or felt. Because I have sons, and it could have been one of my sons yeah. who did it. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I've seen, too, on Facebook. They'll say, well, uh, who raised him? I said, boy, yeah. I used to go to the school, girl. Mm -hmm. I told him if I had come up there, baby, I'm coming in Dashika there for a week and I'm coming clown. I'm coming to get you, man. I'm going to look bad. I'm going to act crazy. I'm going to get you in school. I would come over That's there. Right. And I mean, but still, regardless of how you raise them, what you've done, and, and, and your child just wow. sometimes they take on other characteristics. Like, yes. you know, yeah, I wrote in my book some of that stuff hereditary. You know, it is. Uh, some stuff's are, some things that I've seen, even with domestic violence, I know a girl, she got killed, but. Her sister was killed in a domestic yes. violence about maybe two years or three years before, wow. and then she died in one. Uh, and she, they were in Mississippi, you mm -hmm. know. And he was a work buddy, you know. So I'm understanding that some of this stuff. I don't know how that devil line all this crap up. Tell it. He lining it up, baby. He lining oh it up. He'll God. say, "Okay, we are gonna kill some women this week." Them jokers just yes. listen to that devil and they start just killing. They just mm -hmm. go on a killing spree. And they don't know why they doing it. Seriously. They don't know why they doing it. Seriously. And, and then reality going to come around one day. <laughs> yes, it is. Wow. And, yeah, it's coming. And like you said, and it's a learned behavior. 
I mean, you know, and like you said, it's like, that's what my prayer and my mission is to find out, you know, what's really going on with these children. Let's, let's reach them like, some people laugh at me when I say it, let's reach them at a daycare level. Mm -hmm. Because That's the kids are witnessing, you know, domestic violence at a young age. My my granddaughter was four years old when she saw her mother murdered. Wow! So it's like, you know, it's no age limit to it. And now God has me to reach out to the boys, the males, and the young boys because some of them are being abused, and also we need to catch them to let them know. That's not the way, you know, to resort in it, you know, by killing yeah. and beating. So. God gave me a vision, saving our sons, saving our daughters. Because it's a it's a whole, it's a unit, it's a family, it's a target. Okay, like for instance, when my daughter was murdered, that target, like you said, the devil targeted her, her life was taken. It affected everyone, me, wow. my yeah. husband. Domino effect. Yes, wow. a whole, I mean, her siblings, family, friends, I'm talking about all over the world. We're still suffering. So it's like that one attack. That's the mission, to take out a whole family, a whole generation. So where can we stop that? And like you just said earlier, you don't understand it. I was saying it. To, I'm like, what's going on? I don't understand it. What's really going on? Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, last week, it was one on a Thursday, then one on a Saturday. Sure. One on the last Saturday, on the Saturday before. I mean, even when my daughter was murdered, it was three young ladies within one week. And why we have to stop that, uh, and, and the old school going to pay attention, because I'm 60, y'all going to know what I'm talking about. Yes. My mom used to tell me that things happen in threes. Wow. Like if somebody died in your family, it'll happen, if somebody, through two more I may die. Uh, if a train derail, it'll be two mm. more that'll derail. A uh, plane go down, here go two more planes go down. It's it like all that stuff would happen yes. in three. So the young folk would tell her, oh, no, it ain't. I say, I tell you what, I ain't going out the door. Okay. I'm, I, I'm not going out the door. I, I mean, I ain't catching no okay. plane when the plane go down. Cause it, and, and they going to notice this. Now, since Jasmine told you, I want y'all to start noticing My it. Lord. It ain't nothing but the devil. He lined it up where it'll happen in threes. It'll yes. happen in threes. You'll hear people that say, well, my, my brother died, my other brother died, my sister died, my sister died. They'll start going like, you know, because I've seen people that go to a funeral and then they'll die that, that next, next day. Week. Seriously? So, yeah, it'll be some things where it happen in threes. So if we could just try to get a hand on some of this. This crime, some of this, uh, I mean, good people don't want to hurt nobody. You really no. don't. You don't want to hurt nobody. No. If you got anger management, you need to go get in some classes. Yes. You need to talk to a psychiatrist. Yes. Now, I know about them having a temper, though, sister. Yes. I met one. I ran into one. He was handsome. I ran into one when I was 19. I was 18. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was 18. Probably going on 19, but uh, mm -hmm. he was supposed to be my, my old man. That's right. <laughs> we called him old man back in the day, but look, that joker had a temper. Wow. He would fight you. He could, and I don't mean he would just whoop women. Mm. If you made him mad or he clicked, he had a problem. Yes. And I mean, he would whoop, I don't see him whoop a man. Wow. Whoop a man down. It was a temper. It was mm. uncontrollable. Yes. And I, okay, I got that first whooping. And then uh, the truth. I, I went to Texas with him. Mm. So I got, I, when he come out with this bag again, he going to say, you know, ba uh, you could leave, but I got this money. The baby could have a nice Christmas. Smile. Okay, good. Here I go again. I'm going to try to stay and have a oh. nice Christmas. It was a nice Christmas, but I got that next whooping again. See now, him? let me tell you, I oh made him God. tell me. I stayed down there. Mm. I did everything. Been nice, kind, didn't make it mad. Yes. The day he told me, that morning when he say, I love you, Ada. Ada had had that money ready. Yes. I caught me a bus. My oh, auntie. Wow. I ain't going to never forget Dorothy Sampson. Because yes, my other family said don't come back. Y'all ladies be careful mm, telling girls Lord. don't come back home when you my leave. Lord. The other families told me, you know, my mom and everybody mm. said don't come back. You leave, don't come back. So I had to call Dorothy Sampson. Wow. And Dorothy Sampson, my Uncle Moe's wife. She, she said, we're going to get some money. And she called me. She said, we got money. We got enough for you to eat. And we ready. we're ready. getting you on back to the house. Yes. I could have been dead myself. Yes. you know. Yes. But they'll smile and say they ain't going to do it. Man, I had to leave. They told me he was crying. He was looking for you. Put your hand, look at me. I was gone, baby. <laughs> Jazz was gone. I, I wasn't finna get all them battle scars, man. Amen. And know what they do? They beat you up and stuff. Yes, and then they go get somebody else. And it's look now. Nah. It's the truth. You know what I'm saying? It's the truth. Now, we as sisters. 
I feel we we got to rally around. I was in preaching one day, and this man was whooping this woman. Wow. And some kind of way, I thought they were playing. Some kind of way, he had got on top of him. So I blew my horn. I got out the car, and I told his friend, I said, you gonna, y'all you going to stay here and let this man do this? But sister was giving it up, though. You hear me? Yes. She was fighting back. She was on the ground fighting. Then he told me, let go of my hair. Let go of my hair. She had his hair. Wow. She was study fighting him. Mm. But I'm saying, why we got to go through this? Why we got to do oh, this? Oh, my God. If you don't want something. Somebody. Yes, yes. Make some plans, Lee. Make Sit down and make a pimp quick. decision. Mm. Say, look, this is not getting along. This is not getting along. Because if you can't yes. get away from it, you got to sneak and leave. But, you sneak know, if y'all can sit down and talk about it, you know, but I just left. I was gone. I was like, load up the truck and you hit the bed, please. <laughs> I got up out of there. Man, I wasn't finna take it. I wasn't finna to take it. Amen. I wasn't gonna Amen. take it. You Amen. better than that. You know, you better That's than right. that. It's you better right. than that. That's right. Now, if they, the they need some help. They really do. You know, and I know women that need some help. Yes. Got tempers. Oh, I mean, you know, they just click and go off, whoop everybody, grab everybody, you know what I'm saying? That, that, and, and, you know, yes. fighting promotes arthritis. It really does. It promotes cancer. Wow. Bottled up emotion promotes cancer. So mm. I just want them to understand high blood pressure. You're going to make yourself have a stroke fighting wow. somebody. You know, and the ones that have been beating up on folks, because they walk around with their hands with arthritis like mm. they got. Yeah, your hands be balled up like you got a, like you throwing gang sign. Mm. You walk around and say, hey, your hands stuck like that. Uh -oh. <laughs> I thought you throwing gang signs up in. Arthritis, jilting your joints, promote arthritis. Yeah. We just want y'all oh to God, know all that. My God. You don't need to do it. it mm. It's not a very good thing. Make, you And some of them. When they get sick, oh, I don't act like that no more, Jazz. Yeah, you can't act like that. That's right. Then that's stress because you used to releasing that pressure and clown. Wow. Oh, I'll clown. Uh-uh, zero tolerance with people that act ugly. If you got some friends that act ugly, you better get away from them because you're going to be a witness to some stuff. That's right. I put my hand up in there like they do in the church and walk by. Wow. <laughs> I'm putting that one thing up and I'm walking by because I ain't going to be bothered with being a witness and everything. Mm -hmm. So now we got to we gotta move forward and, and, and do better. Um... And and I know that mm. how long your baby how long she's been she passed how long has it been it's like I said it's been three years three years yesterday July three years. fourth three years and it's been I'm in a better place now I can actually say the first year oh my God it was like mm, I mean I can't describe it it's like a cry that'll come on you that you can't even control you can't even prepare for it uncontrollably. And so the second year I was okay. I was better, right? And now I'm more better and it's like I'm in a place now where I know my daughter I, I won't see her again on this side of the earth and so it's like I wanna keep her like her legacy alive. How many kids she got? She left two kids. Who got? I have the pleasure yeah. honor of raising them, yes. You raising her babies. I'm raising her uh, babies. Do the kid the one that see it, did she ever cry or you know what they are so amazing wow. and that's why um I'm honored to you know be able to raise them because they give my give me strength if I didn't have them I really don't know what state I'd be in okay wow. it's like when I'm down we balance each other I'm down they they lift me up when one the son is down we lift him up his daughter down we lift her up and it's like they are such a motivation for me, yeah. When I see them, I see my daughter. And when I see them, it makes me strive and fight harder, yes, man, and want to live. Because I didn't want to live. I'm just being honest. I mean, I didn't want to live. I was driving one day. If a cliff was in front of me, I know I often tell this story, I would have driven off. Because it's like, the pain is so unbearable. It's wow. like... It's a hurt that I just cannot describe, that I would not wish on anyone. That's why I stress so much that, you know, it's a selfish act because once the person does the act, they're not thinking about everybody else, you know, okay. the mother and, you know, everybody else that loves that person. Yeah, their the mother, mother you know the, what I'm Yeah, and their mom. And, you know. Those moms going through stuff. People, yes. are, you know, yeah, you know, a son kills man, you know. Yeah, and it's not the mom's fault, you know what I'm saying? It's not. You know. It's not. He, this person took this upon themselves to go and act this not. stuff out. But they are not thinking. 
They at are all. not thinking. At all. And they going to see them. They see them. People call me and tell me they're the kill folk. They see them. I've been talking to them about wow. it. You see them because I had an abortion and you see it. Wow. You see it. I had to get it off of me. So mm -hmm. I'm 51 took it off of me. You see them babies, man. I'm telling you, this stuff ain't no joke. You anybody that can kill somebody, they might not be telling you, but they see them every day. Wow. They see them. Some of them can't sleep. One lady told me yesterday. Said, "Man, be jumping. He try to sleep at night. He jump. He jumping to sleep. He he can't sleep." Do y'all want to go through that? Do y'all want to go through anything we've been talking about on this show tonight? Do you want to go through that? We've got to stop this. Jazz Red is gonna ask for peace. Yes. In the city of Mobile and yeah, the whole world, peace. but since Mobile been acting like and this, peace. California, California, they we they acting crazy. Seriously. Come on now, we ain't never had to deal with this. Yes, we never had to deal with this. Yes, never. You don't want to do that. Don't listen to that devil. Mm -hmm. He get in your ear because he got in mind with with uh suicide when I was fifteen. They talk. Oh, the if you open your ear, he talk to you. And you wow. listen and he'll show you things. Oh, you ought to do it. You ought to come up. So you don't want to get on a level where you listen to the devil. That's fine. What would you say to a mom yes, that's mom. going through this right now? Going through it yes. right now. What would you tell? How could you tell her? What would you tell her? her okay, if I call you and say my daughter just got killed. Mm -hmm. I know they call you because yes. you, you out there as an activist. What would you tell her? How, I would, and I, it's so amazing that you said that. I'm dealing with a situation like that right now. A dear childhood friend of mine, she lost her daughter like a couple of months ago. And I've been, I reached out to her immediately, and I've been reaching out to her, and she's agreed to come. And that's why, I, and you know, some people probably would tell, you need to get out, you need to get out. No, when, I, when she tell me that she can't make it or... You know, I can hear it in her voice. Wow. Her voice is at a point where she's crying okay. and she's talking in her voice. If okay. anybody can really understand. Okay. It's as if she's crying and talking at the same time. So, me being through this as a mother of a a murdered child due to domestic violence, mm -hmm. I feel, I know what she's going through. So, I constantly encourage her, and just like I would encourage any mother that's looking, that is viewing this show, anybody that knows a mother, I will tell them these words, this too shall pass. Yes. I will let them know it's not going to be easy. I cannot tell you and sit here and tell you that it's going to be easy. It's going to, it's really a day-by-day -day thing. I'm learning now, when people invite me to different things, to do different things, I can only tell them, I will, I'm, I'll come if I can and I say that because I may wake up that next morning and I'm just over with okay I can't even get out the bed I can't sleep I you know be a restless night and I mean I'm but just it's something staring. I see in you that you did do I seen a mom yes. her 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 son had paid. that mom she disliked God Oh, uh, uh, have you yeah. seen it? Have you seen that? I've yeah. seen one that uh, I, God yes. wouldn't let that happen to my yes. child. Yes. She was angry. God ain't. Did. I said, sister. Yes. When you down, that's all you got. Yes. That's and, all you got. Yes. And some people have asked, told me, I've had people to tell me that it's okay to get mad, mad at God. Uh, oh no, uh, I can't get mad at God because no. one thing I know, whatever God's will. It's the perfect will. That's right. And he knows best. And like the old people told us a long time ago, we'll understand it by and by. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't know. I don't know the big picture. But he knew it. And I know. I thank God for what he has done and what he shall do. That's and right. I know she was his child, first of all. That's and right. so, but one man brought it to my attention and said that. And I, do, I, I accepted that. Okay. I was beginning to like. Just constantly grieving, you know, which is part of it. But it, I was at a point where, like, giving up or whatever. And he was he was saying that, in a, in a sense, that's like you really not accepting what God allowed, if you okay. really can understand what I'm saying. Okay. So I had got to that point. Didn't want to accept it. But I'm in a better place in now. Better place. I'm in a better place. And I want, like you said, encourage the mothers. Okay. This too shall pass. Okay. All right. Just stay, you know, prayed up. If it wasn't for God, I couldn't be here sitting here telling you this. I, I, only God is going to bring you through. Constantly be around some people that will motivate you. 
what has helped me is getting out, telling my daughter's story. It's been therapy for me. Okay. And I know sometimes people are not speakers, you know, but whatever it takes for you to get through this, get through it. Get through it. And I am a living witness. You will get through it. Give them a phone number in case they need to call. And if you need to call me, mm -hmm. you can call me. My number is forever open. Devonna Tinsley, 251-644-0200. I have a Facebook page, Devonna Tinsley. Also, I have a Facebook page, Tori Story, which is named after my daughter. Tori Story. Tori okay. Story. When we come back, uh, I've got a little something for her. Okay. Jazzeria, we love you. Peace Thank out. you. Jazzeria Talk Show, we're going to speak up a little bit. Jazz got a lot of running to do. We got a, a gift for you, girl. Oh, okay, we got you. this here. and Y'all probably can't see it, but it's got some little... Look like some seals on the inside there. Yes, <laughs> That'll be with you. your oh, and and a a bottle, wow. uh, a bottle, a perfume bottle. Yes. Tell them, now you had said you were gonna do something with that. Tell them what you said you were gonna when do. When I with. saw this bottle, Jack, I'm so I've been getting so many awards and tokens, and that you know, and all of them have a significant value, a message. Like when I saw this, instantly I said I was going to put some of bless oil in. It. If anybody know about the anointing oil. That you, uh, it's just olive oil, but I normally get my pastor to pray, and I normally just anoint myself with it. Okay. Uh, and I just see myself filling this up with anointing oil as a reminder on my dead, my dresser to just anoint myself. All right, get that phone number out yes. one more time. And once again, you can reach me, Devonna Tinsley, two five one six four four zero two zero. I'm sorry, two five one six four four zero two zero zero. Or you can reach me on Facebook, uh, Devonna Tinsley, mm -hmm. and our Tory story. All right. Yes. Jazz Red, we love you. Hope Thank you got you. something out of this. Peace out. Jazz Red Talk Show, and I'm your host, Jazz Red. We, we've here with uh, the McCall family. We still going to do something with a house, but oh, tell yes. them about the weather, the weather, girl. Tell them. The Lord have to do his work. And when he have to do his work, we have to sit down. But it's not over. We are still going full forward. Mm -hmm. We are still going to stay stand forward with everything. We just have to wait till the rain stops and everything dry up at 657 Donald Street, Mobile, Alabama. So don't forget, y'all, I will be posting on Facebook. And also I'm telling you here, all hands on deck. We're asking y'all to please come at 657 Donald Street, Mobile, Alabama, and help Miss Katie put her house back together. Yeah. And we really appreciate all the help that we have been given and getting donation. and donation. And it's just been pointless to the end. God is good. And I'm going to stay focused, and I'm not going to let this devil worry me, but I'm going to sit down and let the Lord do his work, and we will stay focused on 657 Donald Street. We're going we're gonna to pray. I want, I want to get her in there for Christmas. She was trying to move in there Christmas. Yeah. And uh, somebody set that house on fire, set the top of it on fire, and we got a lot of smoke damage on the inside. But I know there are some contractors that can donate some time, too. Y'all got some time y'all can donate. This is what we're going to do. All right. Uh, get that phone number out one more time. Phone number for Michelle McCall, 251-652-5821. Jezzeret, we love you. Peace out. Jezzeret Talk Show. And this song will be the icing on the cake with all this stuff that's going on. Her name is Josephine Dickerson. All right, girl, crank it up. Destructions in the land. God's gonna move his hand. Oh, time is a winding up. Better get in a hurry. Time is a winding up. Better get in a hurry. Time is a winding up. Destructions in the land. God's gonna move his hand. Oh, time is winding up. Can't you see that time is winding up? Don't you see that time is winding up? Destructions in the land. God's gonna move his hand. Oh, time. 
is wide enough. Go and tell the sinner, time is wide enough. Go and tell the sinner, time is wide enough. Destructions in the land. God's gonna move his hand. Oh, time is wide enough. Jesus is the Savior. Time is wide enough. Jesus is the Savior. Time is wide enough. Oh, instructions in the land. God's gonna move his hand. Oh, time is wide enough. Why don't you call on his name right now? Time is winding up. You need to call upon his name right now. Time is winding up. Lord Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, time 